So here we go. Today we are going to discuss about the security risk assessment. Before we start about the security risk assessment, um, I hope that you already have the idea about the threat model that what we discuss. So you are aware about the threat model and you are aware that when it is uh, going to be in a practice and why we are using the threat model, at what stage we are using the threat model and how many types of the threat models are and how we can uh, means design the threat model uh, practice, uh, how we do the threat model practice to means making uh, safe and secure uh, the assets are the process of the software and what is the stride and what is the dread and what are the other other different models. So these things are important to understand because now we are going to discuss about the risk assessment. So what is the um, I means important in it and how and why we are discussing the threat model here. So you will be able to know the reasons about that, that what is the risk model and later you will be knowing that how we can I means differentiate among both of them. Now, as you know, <clears throat> sorry, from the name that this is the security assessment, but for what? But for the risk. So now we are looking for the security risk assessment. So in the threat model, we were trying to find out the threats to our software. And I hope you are aware about what is the uh, means uh, security, what is the threat, what is the vulnerability, what is the point of exploitation, those points which we discussed already, okay? Now, while we are going ahead, so you can see that why do we study the risk? The question is, that we already done with the threat modeling. We know about that. But now why we do about the risk assessment? Why it is important, okay? So there are many outcomes and possibles, but not all of them are probable. It means when we go for this, we may find out so many risks in our product. But at the end of the day, we cannot say that these, all of them, they are actually important, are actually required. Uh, actually, we need to consider to all of them. What it mean? Okay, keep these points in your mind. So when we will be reaching ahead, so you will see that what it means. I can give you a brief about that. Say, for example, there is no system in this world without the risk. Even our life is at risk. Even our job is at risk. Even anything what we are doing, our business at risk means at the risk. So, in each of the thing, always the involvement of the risk is there. But the level of the risk is different. So what we do, we prioritize the level of the risk. Like you are a student, you are enrolled for the different modules, for the different semester, the risk is there. What is the risk? The risk is that in case if suppose some of the student is not doing properly, not submitting assignment, assessments and whatever it is. So the risk will be going to be higher in a danger level that that particular student will not be able to complete the module. Now, the one student who is means doing hard work, submitting everything, attending classes, doing everything. So it doesn't mean that that risk is not there. The risk is there, but that particular student is trying to minimize the level of the risk. So when we are means trying to minimize the level of the risk, it means that we have chances that we can go through easily avoiding the risk. That is known as the actually uh, abstract level of the definition for the risk management. But 
keep in your mind that risk management and risk assessment is different. In risk assessment, we are trying to assess the level of the risk, and then we are going to prioritize it. And in risk management, it means that is the next level after the risk assessment. Once we've done the assessment, we know about what are the risks and what are their priorities or what are their level. So based on that, we can see that now we can make a plan to manage the risk. So I repeat again that there is no product in this world which is 100% free of risk, everything. That's why I gave you an example about your own where you are as a student, about anybody who is doing a job, about anyone who is doing a business, even about our life as well. Risk are involved at the each and every level. So in the same way, the risk is involved in this object product as well. And keep in mind that we cannot remove 100% means the danger of the risk are, we cannot remove the risk 100%. Risk will be there, but then we need to assess and we need to minimize our means, take it to the safer zone as our product can be running. We need to group them, we need to rank them, we need to prioritize them. And there are the few risks which are at the higher level. It means they can become a reason to stop our product. So like in the same way in our life, there are the few risks at a higher level if we will not take care about our health. So it means the level of risk will be higher and there is a possibility that someone can lose his life. This is just only an example for your better understanding. As the example we discuss about the means as you're being a student about your module and about your success for the modules. So in all of the V, the risk will be there. So when we are saying that we are taking care 100% about our health and everything and everything, but it doesn't mean that we 100% overcome the risk and now this is a guarantee that nobody will be going to die. No. So that's what we mean, that we always there are the risks. So we need to assess the risk, okay? And then we need to plan a better management of the risk. That is the core level of the message for this particular chapter. That what is the risk assessment. And why we do the risk assessment, we need a risk assessment as we can do the risk management. And now keep an important point here. If any software, we doesn't follow the security requirements, that's what we discuss in our early lectures. Okay. And if we doesn't follow the means threat modeling and other things, that's what we discussed before. It doesn't follow the secure coding. That means, means a clear message that that product will have the higher level of risk. In the risk assessment, we can only means be able to find out at which are the risks there, how many are, what is the level of the risk there, and we can find out and we can list them and we can prioritize them. And then you can see the discussion. The discussion, it means that now we can see that which of the risk we can address them or which of the risk we are able to take them, uh, means drag them to the safe zone. So now you can understand that how the risk assessment is actually interlinked with the previous practices that what we are discussing. So first of all, it is the most important point that we need to understand what is the risk assessment. Then only we can be able to manage the risk. So once we understand the risk management assessment, then we can do the proper assessment of the risk for any of the product. And then we will be only able to list them and prioritize them. What, what we mean by the prioritize them, that prioritize based on that which can be addressed and which can be means drag them to the safer zone. And then we can release the product. So what did it mean? Why well, I'm trying to explain you from the different angles. That means that whatever the product we have, whatever the softwares we have, whatever the uh, means app, apps and gadgets what we are using, we cannot, no one can claim that any one of the 
uh, means application or the software that is 100% free of the risk. No, but they have lower level of risk than we means allow its productivity, allow its deployment. So that how we can means meet the requirement that we can do by using the risk assessment. That is the primary goal of this chapter. And now you can understand how this is linked with the previous chapters like the threat modeling and other things. So what we were discussing last day about the SQL injection. Okay, so if suppose there is a possibility of the SQL injection, it was not being handled at the previous stages during threat modeling or at the secure coding or at the means requirement collection or at the GUI design or whatever it is, then what happened? Then it means that the in the risk assessment, the level of danger will be higher. It will not be not in the safe zone. So now we can prioritize that this is the higher level of risk. So if the higher level of risk, we have to remove it. So we have to means go back and come up for the some sort of the solution for what? solution for the SQL injection. Otherwise, our whole product will be means lost. At the same time, there are the few of the other issues, like suppose maybe there's spoofing possibilities will be there at the user level or something. So that we cannot remove at 100%, but we can do something means to care about that, but we can, uh, even after that, we can allow the product to be launched. So this is how these things are important and these things are interlinked with each other. So try to understand the core concept about that as you can be able to enjoy your lecture and you can understand the things clearly. Going ahead. Now, I hope that you understand that what it means by the risk assessment. So you can see from here, from this cartoon, it is a great message in it, okay? So the two gentle, uh, means one gentleman and gentle lady, they are going there. So what they are means talking about, they are saying about that you should see the new management consultant we hire. It means they are the two employees for the organization. They are going and they are discussing, uh, discussing something and they are saying that they hired a new consultant, okay? The management hired a new consultant. He is going to make all of our risk disappear. They hired the consultant for what? That the consultant will be there who can means address the risk what they are appearing at the organization. So how he will do? He's not a magician. Okay, he will do the assessment of risk. Then he will means suggest to means prioritize and rank them. And then he will suggest it how to remove them or how to drag them in the safer zone. So once this will be either removed or either it is means these are dragged to the safer zone, so the organization will be safe from the risk. This is how this principle is worked for anything in our life, for our software, for any other product, for any organization so the risk is involved from a lower level means from a one entity to the means the biggest entity means from the software to the database and to the department and to the university level or to the organization level and it goes up and up and up and up what it mean it means it involves everywhere but here what we are discussing that what we are discussing about the risk assessment related to the software development because we are looking for secure software system. So how the one of the system can be secure from the risk? You remember we discussed multiple times that there was there are the very important and very giant companies they launch their products and we name them multiple times. But because of those risks, those products were after even launching, they were not able to address that. So from this, we need to understand some important thing as well. That in case if suppose we are not following the standards from the start, starting from, from the all of the SDLC levels, then even 
and the stage comes that we will not be able to manage the risk and unfortunately we have to withdraw from the product so you can understand it's important that's why it is highly important highly important to follow the secure our security means uh, matrix our security procedures while we are going for these software development. otherwise our successful software our complete software software and deployed software a deployed product could be removed again so this is the very important pillar of the security which is known as the secure software development. i hope you understand the importance and you can link it with your previous means contents what we had now going ahead now in the risk to understand it even more uh, means clearly you can see from here that what is our purpose okay? and uh, you can see from here that our purpose is we need to characterize we need to define we need to mitigate and we need to eliminate now eliminate is there and mitigate is there as well as you remember we discussed that eliminate it means that we can remove them completely mitigate then means we need to means provide a solution for that somehow we can take it to the safer zone so that is the something really important you need to understand so you can see from the right side so it is showing actually what is showing that protect and defend so if i just make a pointer for you for your better understanding so you can see from here that in this in this this is the protect okay we want to protect our product but at the same time we want to defend so you can see from here in the defense side you can see we need to defend from the risks we need to defend from the threats we need to defend from the vulnerabilities so what i mean these things are not only important but these things are interlinked with each other so we need to be carefully means knowing about it's important and whatever we are discussing i hope you understand what i mean okay this is truly truly important okay and how these things are interlinked and how these all things are at the end of the day means really important and really interlinked with each other okay now going ahead you can see just a reputation just a recap not a reputation but we can call a recap to give you recall you the meaning about the risk so we know what's the risk risk is nothing we already discussed risk is nothing but that is the threat times of the vulnerability and you know the vulnerability vulnerability it means that something uh the some a sort of the weakness is there in our code and vulnerability means that's the something which can be exploited by the hacker and if suppose there is the vulnerability is there so it means that is the means possible threat for us that this product can be means exploited at any stage of our life of the product's life so what it mean that what he is trying to explain to you so what is the risk so risk is not a something new <coughs> sorry risk is not something or something new which doesn't belongs to the vulnerability or to the threats but it is the actually a threat times the vulnerabilities how many threats we have how many vulnerabilities we have so it means while you are going to assess the threat while you are going to means assess the risk it means you are trying to find out that how many threat possible threats are there then you can prioritize them then you can give them the means rank and then you can keep them accordingly so you can make your product safer okay and keep another point which is the important point the higher risk will be in the product in case if suppose we are not following the standards that what we means already discussed the security related requirements from the starting from the requirements from the design and up to the end of the product so this is clear message that we may not understand that we will be able to means get it done or that means achieve the security our secure level our secure systems uh, uh, and they are in between no this is something it's important highly important which is actually required to be addressed from the day first up to 
the deployment and even after the deployment. So this is a need of each level, each step. Each, that's why we are following this one with the SDLC all the time. I hope you understand. That means the potential load or damage or any assets of the result. So we are know about the threat and the vulnerabilities. And so now we understand it, what's the risk. If suppose the risk is higher, so it means that there is the uh, possibility of having the loss or something to our means assets are here. And we need to have a balance. Balance and protect and balance, you can see on the other side, on the right side, we, we are saying that we have to provide a defense again against the risk and threat and vulnerabilities. We're not saying that we have to remove 100%, which is not possible, okay? But we need to keep a smart balance like you can see from here. So the smart balance, it means that the few of the things we can at first, few of the things we can remove, but we cannot 100%. We are repeating this thing again and again. That's why we give the example of our daily life and uh, of our daily life's routine matters as well. There is no risk. Even, <clears throat> sorry, there is uh, no possibility to avoid this. Even I just give you the one example. If suppose you are, means coming to the campus, or if suppose you are living in a building, a high rising building, and there are all of the facilities and everything is there, and you are going to use the means lift just to means go up and down, everything is okay, but the risk is there. Or the risk is there. Sometimes maybe the electricity is gone, sometimes maybe the malfunctioning uh, inside the lift. Or sometime maybe something is broken and lift is going to be dropped from the top floor to the bottom. This is not something which is impossible. This is happening. We can find out so many cases around the world. So how this happened? Why this happened? Why we reached to that level that the means any of the uh, chamber of the lift is going to be uh, means broken and it is coming down and uh, there are the casualties. So this means that we are avoiding or we are not doing these things. Uh, this means we are not getting the assessment about that particular means product what it is running. That is the product after the deployment. So I'm trying to give you the different examples from the real life as you can understand the things easily. So this, these all examples are best fit in, in any environment because risk is always there and risk is always there in each and every means part of our life. So that is the most important point. So now you can see from here, the risk associated with an event is probably that event will happen times the impact magnitude of the event. Say for example, some of the risk is with some sort of the some event. Whenever the event is going to occur, it means the risk will be higher, okay? So you can understand this, this thing. Say for example, you are driving a car and something has some problem is there, but if suppose we, that will be increasing in case if you are increasing the driving time. So that means that if some risk is involved with the sum of the means event, so then the occurrence of event will be increased. So the risk of level of the risk will be higher. So why is telling that, saying that, that we need to understand, we need to understand that we cannot prioritize, we cannot just mark them, we cannot rank them just on level of that. We need to see that that risk or uh, that threat or uh, that point of exploitation is where, at what part, like suppose in our software as well, we have so many challenges, so we have so many things. But the few of the things, they are in a regular use. Say for example, we have something, we have a risk involved in our login page. We have a risk involved in our registration page. So this is the something which is in the software maybe is being used so many times, multiple times, but some risk which is involved at the back end that it may be used by the users 100 times in a year, but login may be millions times in a year. So even if the post that and the uh, risk of that is the level of danger is very lower in, in the login page, but because it is being multiple use, so that will be considered as the higher level of the risk. So that's what we mean. I hope that you understand from that point. So the frequency of use that is also highly important. Now, going ahead, for the math oriented expected. So what we do, then we can see that we can divide the risk level into the different categories. We can categorize them. What are the categories? We can see the high level, low level, and medium level. Okay, when we see the low level, it means the risk is there because a few of the risks are there, 
We cannot, we cannot take them out. For example, what we quote in the example right now. If you are driving, the risk of the accident is there. So how you can means uh, remove it 100%? You cannot. You can minimize it, that you can make sure that you know the driving properly. You are following the rule and regulations. Your car means safety check is there. Everything is there. But it means that now we are minimizing the risk. But we cannot say that we are means completely eliminating that if these things are there, then there is guarantee or surety that there will be no accident. No, there will be. There is a possibility. So now if we are doing these all things, it means that we can say the level of the risk is lower. If we are not doing these things, then we can see the level of the risk is higher, higher, higher. And when it is higher, so it means that is the something dangerous level. So this, this rule, uh, same rule goes to the software products as well. I'm trying again and again to give you the real life examples for your better understanding. Okay, going ahead. So now it's included, what's the risk? The risk assessment is actually the probability of the vulnerabilities and its consequences. So I hope you understand comprehensively, completely what I tried to explain. So we need to avoid them. We need to control them by avoiding, by managing, okay? And we need to eliminate whatever the parts we are able to eliminate. And for the things where we are not able to eliminate, we need to drag them, control them, to bring them in the safe zone. Like what I gave you the example for the driving one. Okay, so this is the way that how we can means go for that. And that is what he is, I mean, is trying to explain us here. Okay, now what's the risk assessment? We already discussed about that and how we can assess. So that's the way to determine the risk are the fingers at the point of exploitations are all of the weaknesses in our software. So how we do that? We use the different sort of the algorithms, softwares, tools are there. Like you can see, uh, like what we explained to you yesterday about your assessment number one. So that is about the security threat analysis. Okay, so you will finding the threats. It means the number of the threats are more. So it means that is leading more towards the higher risk of level of high. So once you will be finishing that one, that's a simple and easy assessment, but that's important. It will means open your eyes. You can try to use those, I mean, systems or those websites. Say for example, you can use the Times or some other websites or anyone at, at, at your choice. But what I mean that you can use the something which you are using on a daily basis, and then you can see that how many possible means uh, threats are there, vulnerabilities are there. And it's still we are using. So it means what? If these are there, so why not we are stopping the, them using them? So that's what I am trying to explain to you, that we cannot remove 100%. Then we need to drag them to the safe zone. The safe zone, it means the level where we can allow that, okay, the system can be misdeployed, the system can be wiped. So the same practice we are doing with our software products as well. So the risk assessment includes what? To analyzing the possible hazards. So we do the risk assessment normally with the product which is ready mostly. And we do the, uh, means normally the threat modeling with when the product is in plan and we are going to means deployment. That's the right time. It doesn't mean that the threat modeling we are not able to do for the sum of the product which is already working. Okay, but the best fit for the threat modeling is that what we discussed at the design time, at the DX0. So in the same way, the risk assessment, also we can do it from the early stages, but at least once the software is ready, we can have to have this one to know that where we stand. So we can be safer, or we can be secure our product before we can launch the product. So we can do this even after launching, before and at that state as well. But the best, best good time is that what we are trying to means discuss here. Now finding a solutions in a safe manner and avoiding the damage of the property because this risk may lead to the damage of the property. If the software, for example, in the one of the software, 
is not good. Is having a problem, having a risk, high risk. What it will do? For sure, it will damage our assets. What I mean by the assets? The assets, it means actually our databases and other resources. So for sure, it will damage our organization as well. So any of the damage or any of the risk, even if it is, uh, means uh, in the boundary, suppose we, we define, you remember in the thread modeling that in the trust level or in the machine level or in the process level, whatever and wherever it is, don't consider that this is something not important. It is important because they could lead to completely damage our product as well. This is the highest possibility that it could be going to damage our product as well. So we have to be careful and we have to handle them means properly in all of the means. Okay. Now, if the hazard cannot be avoiding in a safe way, then the risk assessment will say that the activity should be carried out. Now, here there are the two important points. One is that suppose something is means very uh, important and there are the some of the risks where we are, are not able to find out any way. So it doesn't mean that we may stop the art, uh, sorry, uh, the art product. Okay, we can drag it into a safe zone. But the other point that is actually, maybe you are uh, aware about that or not, that is known the successful failure concept in software. What is the successful failure? That means that in case you suppose any high risk or any uh, means threat or any vulnerability or any, uh, anything which is just going to crash our system. So we need to manage with the code, that is the security requirements, that when our system is going to be crashed, it must be crashed with a safely, in a safely manner. What do you mean by the safely manner while it is already crashing? So it means that even our system is crashing, it's, the system is coming down, so it may not means crash everything, it may not bring a loss for the means software for the organization, but it may crash with the minimal loss, with the minimal uh, level of the damage to the software, that is we are also handling in our code. Because we are ready all the time that anything could be possible. So that is, we call the safe and are the uh, safe uh, crash of the system concept in the software. So we already discussed it, what it covers, but again, understanding what it is explained, that a risk assessment must include the possible dangers that could occur in the software. That's what we are discussing, that what, what aspects we can cover in the risk assessment. So the risk assessment should include the guidelines for protecting people as well. So we need to know, we need to train, we need to have the information. So after that, we can only guide to the organizations and to the peoples once we have the information. So we have to have handle these things which comes for the risk assessment and what we know that what they are going to cover. Now, we have different approaches to means cover our conduct of the system. As I mentioned to you, that we have a lot of different things, a lot of different tools. We do it manually. We have the tools, we have the algorithms. And you can find a hundred of tools there to find out the vulnerabilities, to find out the threats, to find out the bugs, to find out the means risk for everything you will find out a lot of things that's what you will be going to do uh, for your first assessment so you will try to see that how many things are and that will really make you wonder that how many things you are considering the, the things that we are the safer but in actual uh, what is the condition okay so means in that approaches one of the approach we, we say for example or any of the approach whatever we are going to use always those approaches have the pros and the cons. So we need to be, means very much careful what it is. So that is the reason that you will find a lot of number of the tools. And that is the reason you remember in your assessment, there is a question that whatever the tool you are choosing, why you are choosing that tool, give the reason. And you need to think that why there are so many tools are there. If suppose the job is the same, but when you run that, when you see, maybe it means uh, probably 
from your different groups, they will be using the different tools. You will see their results will be different even though when they are going for the same problem. So that further we will discuss while you will be having the presentation next week. Okay, so you can see from here, the write down your past fears for the system. Try to avoid those things. Okay, we know about our system while you are developer, while you are designer, while you are security engineer. So you know what are the blue codes and what are the weaknesses, okay? So because the consequences could be require big backup tricks and easily overwhelming security. Anyhow, we have to be careful for these are the points. Now, it's still further. If you still not understand what is the security risk, we already discussed a lot about that, but it's still, then we can understand that this is the expired the value of asset. Because the risk is always linked to damage the assets, to damage the property. Okay, so we need to take care to manage it, to control it, and we cannot manage until we have its analysis. Analysis means assessment. Assessment means now we know exactly that where these things are and at what level they are. Then we can group them so we can prioritize them, we can mark them, and then we will be only able to manage these things in a proper way. Okay, so otherwise they can be exploited and they can bring a higher level of the damage to our products. Now, assets are what? Assets, assets can be tangible or intangible as well. You need to understand that our assets are the most important part of our organization. If some of the software is, is going to be down, that's a loss, but that's not a big loss. But our assets, if suppose they are going to be damaged, that's a big loss. For example, the exam marking system, that's a software, that's a product, but it goes to the database, which is the central database for the student. And that database is being used for finance, for admissions, okay, for exam, for attendance, for faculty. I'm just giving you an example. So if there is a problem in the software, which leads to damage the software, that's a big loss. But what happened if suppose that is going to damage our asset, which is the database, which is the commonly handled on the back end. So it means it is going to damage not only to the exam system, but it is going to damage to all of our systems faculty systems, finance system, admission system, marketing system. So that is means a high a problem. That's why we are doing these all things to make safe our assets. So you remember in the previous two previous slides where I showed to you that we are trying to have a balance, okay, for our assets to manage. So that's how the risk is highly important and we are trying to come up with the values with the CIA, which is the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Okay, so exploit increased by more vulnerabilities. This is a sort of the recap, and we can say that we already discussed these concepts. So, if the vulnerability is higher, for sure, it will be the point of exploitation is high. Okay, increased by the far-reaching vulnerabilities, increased by discoverable vulnerabilities. So in a simple words, if we can see that the higher level of the vulnerabilities, it leads to the higher level of the threats. And that leads to the higher level of what? To the risk. Okay. So the probability of the risk will be increased. And there are so many factors involved. But the risk, there are so many factors involved. So we have to counter those factors, all of those factors. And we have to control them at all of the levels, at all of the stages to make sure that the risk is under control. I use the word under control. I didn't use the word, I, or we cannot use the word, or we cannot say that this is risk-free, cannot, not possible, don't make a mistake. But we can say under control, okay? That's what we are saying. Oh, okay, the situation is under control. It doesn't mean that it is 100% free, but we are saying situation is under control. It means that the risk level is means minimum are in the safe zone. Okay, going ahead. Assets, as we already discussed, 
that every software has the assets. Again, specific side like suppose for the patients and because we already discussed, but uh, because it's there, so we are just going to miss, uh, discuss it again. So the domain is specific, patient records, domain independent and intangible uh, means the domain independent is actually the passwords. Okay, say for example, we are discussing about the Twitter. So what happened with the Twitter? If the passwords are stored at some place and they are means going to be hacked and this happened, recently this happened. Millions and um, billions of the passwords for the Facebook and for the other means social networks, they were means leaked and then the hackers, they were trying to post them on the different websites. So that is the lost domain. And what's the loss? Domain is specific. Say, for example, anything which is they are going to damage inside the data, database or in, in inside the system. And intangible properties, like suppose for the their availability. So see anything, any risk, any threat, they can lead to the failure of the product. And in the product, in your software product, always keep remembered. The most important point is the reputation and or the trust of the customer. How many people we are using the ATM for the transactions? Because the people has a trust. We know that there is the risk involved. But have a trust that this operation is okay and there is nothing happened to us, so this is fine. I can give you the one example. One of the professor in the past while I was working in Saudi Arabia, okay? That professor, he was from Sudan and Three, two to three times mishap what happened to him while he was using ATM. He stopped using ATM even though he was an educated a full professor and everybody was saying that this is by chance and everything and everything. He said, I will never ever use the ATM in my life. I will always use to draw the money as means deposit the money using the I means manual piece. Now what happened? That means that he loses his trust on the system. So if the customer will lose the trust on the system, then whatever our system is, how much time we spend, how much technicalities means we spend, how much the cost we involve, that all is useless. We are using so many products in our daily life. Say, for example, you are young man, you are having so many cell phones in your hands. You are coming to the campus, you are using so many different cars. You notice there are so many different cars, there are so many different products for the cell phones. But few of them, they are very popular and few of them, they are not. Those products which are very popular because of the trust of the customer. And the moment the customer lose the trust, then whatever the product is, that will be means nothing. That will become a zero. So how we can manage and keep the trust level, that's how your secure software development means give the confidence and trust to the users. So this is something truly, crucially important. We can call that this is the backbone of our product line. So that's why we have to be very much means uh, careful and clear about these things. Now you can see from here in the assets, we can see the assets are, you may not confuse yourself that the assets are only the database, but assets are in the organization, our people are our assets as well. The most important assets are the people. In, in my class, you as a student, you are my asset. This class is the only class for you, but that is that class is not a class for me. That is an asset. This class is just only a class where the module where you means attend and you are coming and you are willing to pass and get a good grace. That is your aim or that's your goal maybe, but that's not my goal. I consider that, that I am responsible for your future, for your career. And this is the one of the block I am trying to fix it, to make a building. So if I will lose something, if I will not take care about anything, it means that will compromise your career, your future. It is highly, highly, highly important for me. And it's highly important for each and every lecture. So we see your career, we don't see this module. And your success, it means 
that my product is risk free my product is now fine if i see you successful everybody then that is my success that is the true thing and i can mean to relax that whatever i have done that is the true thing so you can see in the same way when you are means as a security engineer you are doing for a software so you are not responsible for that only particular segment or for for that particular part of that particular mark means uh, method but you are responsible to see that that how this product is going to be launched and how this product is going to be successful that's the difference of angle and that's a fact as well so you can see from here in the assets the people are highly important what ha what happened if suppose i'm highly highly qualified i'm giving a very great real life examples and i have so many technicalities i have so many experience everything but what happened if suppose my students are not there or my students are not capable to get it in the right way then it means that everything is lost so in the same way in the organization if the people they are not safe we are not taking care about them okay their privacy and these things then it means we are losing our assets and when the employees they lost the trust from the organization then they will not contribute to the organization they will try to go to the next organization so it means what happened that are the assets of the organization and they are going to damage so we this is the critical responsibility that we have to carefully take in care about our assets like our family is our asset how much we are taking care about our family so in the same way our organization is our asset you are my asset that's why i am always means mentioning to you you feel free to discuss with me anything okay and you consider that you are discussing with your elder whatever you consider so to giving you a full trust as you can get the maximum things from that because you are the asset property itself that is everybody is understanding that is the asset true and then the information related to the means property that is as well our asset and the finally is the reputation if suppose we are not managing our assets not managing our property not managing our people not managing anything so what happens it will lead to lose in a day or in a week or in a year the reputation of our organization or the reputation of our software so the organization works software works with the reputation going back to the same example that what we discussed about that professor that he is not ready to use the atm why because he lost the trust from the particular product so now it means that we were not able to take care about the people so that is damaging and now his word of mouth may be damaging our product as well so do we need to take care about these all of the things while we are considering our means product that is how it is important we need to understand now the places where the assets lives that what now i hope that you understand what are the assets including properties information related to the properties as a people or a humans okay as a system and these things so you can see where and what are the places where our assets are lives databases yes for sure user tables configuration files configuration consoles file systems security features in logs sandbox okay sandbox is the some concept where we use that that is only providing the uh, means privileges and rights to uh, the any of the application which is rela related to that one it doesn't allow to means uh, share the resources without permission build an examples network traffic cookies user interfaces and there are so many things these are the few only for your better understanding So we need to be careful for these all of the points. Now you can see risk assessment in process. You can find out the reference. You can means go through from the paper and you can read it more. The link is given below. So you can see from this the risk assessment in risk assessment process. You can find out the numbering is there with number one. Understand the business context. You cannot be known as the Means security specialist are you cannot be 
means successful to find out the risk assessment until and unless you know about the business context. You know about the people, you know about the customers, you know about the software, you know about the process, you know about the requirement, you know means A to Z. Then only you will be able to means able to uh, come up with the right solution or you can be able to suggest the right thing about that. Okay. Number two, identify the business, business risk uh, means uh, and you can analyze it, you can artifact it in the business context. And then you can also see the technicalities. So you can see from this means figure. So it can means give you all of the measures which are the technically, generally, and you, then you can find out the report, then you can validate them, you can fix them, and you can means initiate your process. This is how the risk assessment is actually working. And it is highly important. It's highly important. Not only important to find out what are the risks we have, but it is important to find out that what are the risks and how we can tackle them, handle them, rank them, mark them, prioritize them, drag them in the safe zone. So this is how that is the most important part. Now for the risk assessment, you are supposed to do the planning. Okay, the plan is the one of the most important point is that you need to go for the risk assessment process it itself. But whenever you remember what we discussed in the threat modeling as well, that you need to have the all information. After that, you will be only successful to come up with the right threat modeling. In the same way, here, that is the primary requirement as well. Okay, so you need to have all of the information. Okay, you can discuss, if suppose you don't have information, it being a security engineer, so you, at the end of the day, you have to have everything, then you can only be well to plan, because you don't know what is the asset, then how you will plan well. If you don't know about the process, how you plan well. If you don't know the requirements of the companies, how you plan well. Maybe you are means intimating that this is something, uh, some of the operation is highly risk, and that's the primary operation of the organization. So how, how you, you can help them? So to have the all other primary information about that. Okay, so you can means then only you will be able to means mitigate it. And then you will be only able to eliminate a few of them. And this is the important uh, means step and the communication and these things are highly, highly important. Okay, I hope you understand what it means. Now, there are the few things we call them the Abuses are misuses, okay? And uh, say, for example, uh, involving or uh, involves the planning, okay? So this is actually in the risk assessment. Now, what is the next? The next is actually that potentially infinite, emphasize your domain, and there are so many things, suppose, uh, what do you mean by the abuse? When we are getting or collecting our requirements, so most of the people which are means providing us, helping us for the requirement, they are not technical, they are not. So few of their requirements, maybe they are becoming a reason of misuse. Okay. And uh, we have to cater all of these points. We have to make sure that these things, all these things are, means the real requirements the real process, the real privileges, okay, they are not going to be abuse or misuse. They will not, what it mean by the abuse or misuse? It means that those, if suppose we are not taking care, we are providing them those uh, means priorities and those requirements, fulfilling their, those requirements. It means we are giving them opportunity to our own people that they can damage and they can means increase the uh, risk in our system. That's what it means. We have to understand that one. It's very important. Then the protection poker. This is the, I mean, uh, one of the method or one of the procedure, or one of the V. Means as I discussed that there are so many things mm -hmm. that there are so many softwares are available. So you can do that in your upcoming assessments as well. So they are helping us to find out these things. So you can see from here, the protection poker, a combination of the product and the process. This is actually suited to something where 
can find out the details about by combining the product and the process risk. So what it mean by the product? It means the assets. And process means the process of the software. So they can crash the stories of the assets and quantify the risk prioritization. So you can see that this is the one of the tool which can help us uh, for something to assess the assessments and then they can generate the reports for us and then we can analyze the reports and then we can find out the details about that. So this is only one of them. There are so many, so many you can find out. They are means providing the assessment for the uh, products and there are so many for the process, so many in the combination like this protection poker and the others as well. So the story points estimation in PP, we use the story points now, these are the different, I mean, softwares he is uh, just going to misbrief you. That's why we are not going in a very detailed or depth because these are the tools you will be using by the, by your own. Uh, so you can do your assessments and then you can see that how these things are. So like in the uh, previous one, where it is mentioned in the production poker. So here you can see that this is the story point information and the PP, we use the story points so we can define the levels from this level to this level for this particular unit, what are the means risk involved? And uh, we can means find out the uh, challenges in these things. So we are just, I uh, mean, added here just for your brainstorming, for your idea, uh, but you will be using them practically uh, by your own. So that will be the more appropriate and that will be giving you the higher level of the understanding about that. Going ahead, again, this is the same. So we are just, uh, you can see that it can it can calibrate your assets values, it can calibrate your ease of attack. So this is only the few of the softwares we are giving the examples here. Here, So in this, uh, we, we will be able to, I mean, see that how other things are as well. So the risk assessment process, uh, the most important point, the most important point, the uh, risk assessment process is a continuous process. It is not like the other processes, like what we can see, uh, the, the thread modeling and other things. Why it's a continuous process? You remember we said that we cannot remove 100% risk. So risk, so that's why it's a continuous pro process. It's a continuous practice to be done. So risk and assessment, assets, okay? Assess the threats and the vulnerabilities. So this is the continuous process we need to handle, okay? We need to uh, find out the assays, we need to have the threats, we have need to have the vulnerabilities, we have to risk and these all things we are supposed to, okay? We have to have the assets uh, and critically analyze them and we need to uh, mislocate for the, all of the 10. So that's the most important part. We are supposed to do that. Without that, we cannot uh, means handle them. Okay, so uh, this is, in other words, we can say this is the continuous process. Now you can go ahead to see how does a risk assessment work, how it is. Like we know what's the risk assessment, how we can do and how these things are. When carrying out a risk assessment, there are five recommended guidelines. Okay, what are these guidelines? We have to identify the hazards. What are the hazards? decide why, what might be harm or not and how. So we, it means decide, it means we are going to prioritize them and evaluate the risk and decide on the precautions as well. We can evaluate them, we can come up with the precautions, okay, and decide what might be harmful or not. So it means that we can drag them in the safe zone. Record your findings and put them into the place, okay, and review your risk assessment make the amendments if needed. So, because it is the continuous process, a risk assessment should be carried out for each product and software. And the best practice is that you need to keep this continuously after some time in a cycle. So this is the means five important guidelines about the risk assessment. Okay, these are the recommended guidelines. So this is how we are doing the risk assessment. So risk assessment, you can see from here that we are trying to reach to the means countermeasures for the uh, mitigation of 
opportunities. So we have to be carefully see about the SSP. So SSP is the safety, security, and the policy. So this can help us to mismanage the risk. Safety, policy, you remember all of the times we are discussing about the policy is highly important. Means the organizational policy. While we are going to the institutes, so there are the policies you cannot go here, you cannot use this machine, you cannot install on these things, you have to follow this as uh, means uh, SOP and these things. Uh, Sometimes we feel that these things are uh, means something uh, sort of the hindrance for us, but no, these things are highly important for any organization. These principles and rules are even equally important for our homes as well, but we have the rules in our home. So the life without rule, it means it is means can be exploited at any stage. Higher level of threats are higher level of the risk in there. So in each of the things, we have to have the principles, we have to have the means procedures, we have to have the SOPs, then only we will be on a safer side. So now you can see the risk assessment. Further, we can define uh, how we can do that. So we can define in the scope, we can identify what are our assets, and we can value the assets uh, and, and the, in case of suppose they are going to be failed, what could be the impact on us? And we can assess the like, threats that what could be the possibilities. And then we can determine the overall risk and we can identify, uh, justify the required controls and we can evaluate existing controls and determine the residual of risk. So keep remember, if we conclude, this is important. This is continuous practice and we have to be careful about these things. Otherwise, this can lead to the failure of our product. Okay, these are the few of the references. Uh, several internet and book resources are being used. And these are the other few professors uh, worldwide because your subject uh, is a different. We cannot follow the same book or we cannot follow the things, but we have to update the things all the time because you belong to the technology world and the technology world is not changing yearly, not changing monthly, not changing uh, what we can see uh, weekly, but it is changing even we can say daily or even we can say hourly. So we have to be updated all the time. That's why you remember we discussed that uh, you are free to use the different resources. And that's why we are using in your labs also for WSB, which is the uh, some sort, uh, the highest respectable source in the security world, and that is bringing the real case studies from the world uh, related to your security. Uh, that security is either related to the software or related to the network, related to, to the communication or whatever, any mean of the security. So I hope you understand the things very well. Uh, I try my level best to give you the, I mean, very clear understanding about that. So if you have a question, please let me know. And if you don't have a question, then we can go for your attendance. So we just keep your handphones ready. Meanwhile, I may stop the recording if you don't have any questions.